Uh, can you tell me how you got into sort of ESO? What what was the path to to doing this amazing game and making this amazing game? Wow. So that was uh, 13 years ago, 2007. Um, and I was actually a, a producer on Oblivion. So I worked at Bethesda okay. Game Studios before. Uh, and I used to bug Todd Howard all the time about, you know, this would make a great online game. You know, we should really do this. We should really do this. Um, and he humored me, but he never really was like, yeah, no, you know, we're focused on these other games. And then one day he called me into his office and Matt Fyro was there. And Todd was like, Matt, this is Rich. Um, you know, Rich, this is Matt. Matt is going to lead up the effort in doing an MMO. Matt, please take Rich. All he does is talk about making MMOs. That's all he wants to do. So please get him away from me. And uh, yeah, we've been working together ever since. In terms of the new DLC, Graham, uh, Graham Ware, but can you walk me through how the team sort of came up with the concept? Because it's it's quite a dark storyline. Obviously, it ties back into your sort of Skyrim kind of uh, you know storyline and that. But um, you know, there's there's a lot more to it, I think. Yeah, I mean, one of the things we always do when coming up with you know the next chapter or the next story is we kind of look back on what we've done. And so we had just finished coming off of Elsewhere and kind of the season of the dragon. And that story, while it isn't happy, um, because <laughs> dragons are ravaging um, the countryside and, and whatnot, um, it's a little bit more lighthearted. You know, the, the culture that we focused on with the Khajiit, they're a little bit more kind of happy-go-lucky. You know, it's, it's a little bit different feel. So we wanted to do something that was very, very different. And so that's why we focused more on the dark, serious side of things rather than kind of what we've done in the past. And then... On top of that, we knew we wanted to go to Skyrim, and we wanted to find a way to give players, you know, a little bit of that nostalgia, but also show them some things that they necessarily might not have seen in Skyrim before. And so the Overland, um, you know, you get to go and you get to explore Solitude and see kind of your traditional Skyrim. And then when you go down into Blackreach, that is where we really kind of do our own thing. And you, you've never seen these places before in, in Skyrim, which is uh, is fun for the developers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I'm, I yeah. mean, obviously, being fans of it, working with Bethesda before on Oblivion and, and all of that, it's it's something that I think you, you probably had a lot of fun diving into. Yeah, it's it's... It's always fun going and kind of reimagining things um, and also adding to the world. You know, The Elder Scrolls has been around for 25 years now, <laughs> uh, and we get to add to it, which is, which is awesome. Okay. Um, do you find that the, the concept of the year-long content you've got for the Dark Heart of Skyrim has worked better for the team and for the community? Uh, yes and no. So I think um, it definitely keeps the team, um, makes it a little bit easier for the team in general to kind of be on the same page. They know for the entire year, this is what we're working on. These are the areas that we're going to. So um, it's easier for people to be in the same headspace. Before, um, when we were working on things um, that were very disparate, it was kind of hard because art is usually almost a year in advance of us, uh, ahead of us. So they're working on this stuff while the content teams are still working on, you know, this. And so there was, you know, issues there. Um, from the player's point of view, yes, it makes it easier for the players to kind of know where to start, where to stop, kind of how to get in and how everything's kind of related. Whereas before it was, it was very, very different. So yes, pluses and minuses. I, I like it. Uh, I think the team enjoys it as well. And, and the players thus far enjoyed it too. Yeah, I, I must say I've, I've been enjoying it quite a bit myself. Um, and then in terms of, of the whole year that we've got, I mean, we've still got a few months left of it. We've got some stuff still coming out. Uh, what do you think fans are going to be most excited about? Well, uh, we actually just put our update 27 uh, on PTS last week. So we're on our second week of that. So that has the new dungeons uh, yes. and some of the new story. <laughs> Um, so players uh, thus far on, on PTS have really enjoyed the, the new mechanics that we've done in the dungeons. Uh, the fourth quarter story DLC, I think, is going to throw players a few curveballs. Um, I don't think it's going to be what they're expecting um, in terms of story and kind of how the story finishes out. Uh, and I'm really excited for players to kind of start to dig into that and, and see that stuff. Now I'm all excited. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, just on that, is there going to be an increase in champion points? No. So huh? we are very, very close. We're like this close to actually <laughs> um, talking about what we're doing with, with the champion point system. Um, it's something that players have wanted information on for just over a year now because we, we stopped adding to that and stopped you know increasing the, the player power um, because it was causing causing issues. So we're almost ready to talk about that soon, hopefully. <laughs> well, I'll be I'll be listening. I'll be watching out for okay. that news. <laughs> All right. Um, so there's been a lot of speculation about whether um, ESO is ever going to go cross-platform. Um, there's been some dodged questions. <laughs> so I was wondering if you guys have got any any closer to an answer for that. We don't. I mean, we know players want it. Um, it is not a very easy problem to solve. Each kind of mega server, each platform. Uh, has its own unique environment, has its own unique um, economy, uh, and kind of merging all of those things together is a very, very difficult challenge. Um, and we also made some initial assumptions when we started building the game back in 2007 that aren't necessarily compatible with kind of that that um, cross-platform play. So uh, we don't have any plans in the in the short term. And speaking of mega servers, uh, would there be any plans in future to possibly add more than just the North American and EU mega servers? I think that's something that we're constantly kind of evaluating and looking at. Um, if it makes sense, um, we will probably do something like that. Right now, we don't need to. The servers can can support the, the player base we have. Um, but who knows? We're slowly starting to expand the game, you know, which is exciting. You know, we've been around for six years now, and we just implemented Russian localization. So we've gotten a lot of uh, really good buzz and, and praise for that, and we're seeing the Russian market really take um, uh, embrace that. So you know, who knows? <laughs> but thank you very much. Uh, it was really, really great and really informative. And um, of course, we are definitely going to enjoy the upcoming DLCs. Can't wait for the dungeons. And really excited to see what comes next year. Yay. <laughs> be a lot. Perfect.